Hey, what's up? I got some more lore content for you guys. We're still pretty fresh into the standard format, but there are definitely some powerful decks that everyone knows about, such as the ones I covered last week, Samira Fizz, Karma Set, and Quinn Gwen. These decks are still insanely strong. However, some other decks have come up in the past week to challenge the meta for top tier spots. The cool thing is, they're all aggressive mid-range strategies. Let's see what these strong climbing decks are, shall we? Welcome to Meta Report. And starting us off, we have the deck that blitzed into popularity, and that is Ash LeBlanc. With a win rate of 55.03% and a play rate of 4.82%, it's no surprise that it got this top tier spot. Its winning matchups include Dragons, Scouts, Vayne Aatrox, and Kane Aatrox. Now the worst matchups are Nar Nora, Caitlyn Annie, Swain Caitlyn, and Samira. Getting into the list specifically, I'm really excited to cover this deck because it is an absolute classic. Longtime Legends or Terra players will have an affinity for this deck and will have at least seen it, you know, once or twice before. So starting us off, we have Brittle Steel, Frostbite an enemy with 3 or less health. This is the main mechanic of the deck, we're going to be Frostbiting quite a ton. It helps us level Ash over the course of the game and really nice for winning combat. Elixir of Iron, quick little HP boost, really good as a reaction to Mystic Shot and other damage removal, or to win combat. Next we have Triple Omenhawk, 1 mana 1-1, one, one. when I'm summoned to grant the top 2 allies in your deck, plus 1 plus 1, so you get some stats later. If you play Omenhawk right on 1, that is the best value, and then hopefully you hit like your challenger unit, you want to hit your champions, you want to hit your Trifarian Assessor, and just overall have really nice stats on the board. Next we have Ice Veil Archer, a 2 mana 3-1, on play Frostbite an enemy, so it has synergy with the deck, it can also be used aggressively or defensively depending on how you need him. Next we have Trifarian Glory Seeker, one of the pressure tools in the early game, 2 mana 5-1, cannot block, can only attack, and has challenger. You basically use this in conjunction with Brittle Steel and Elixir of Iron to control the board. Really nice when you get Ash out as well, because Ash will Frostbite the strongest enemy, Glory Seeker can challenge it. Really nice little two card setup with protection in hand, super good at controlling the board and getting ahead. And a fun side note, we want our units to be at 5 attack or higher, that way we have a Reckoning target, we have Bloody Business target, we have uh, Reputation procs, and all kinds of other good stuff. Next we have our first champion, LeBlanc. Speaking of 5 attack unit, 3 mana 5 2 with quick attack, her level up says I've seen you deal 15 damage. Also when I level up, create a Mirror Image. Mirror Image is really cool because you get an ephemeral copy of a 5 plus power ally. This can be Ash for multiple Ash attacks. It can be anything with an on summon effect, you know like Trifarian Assessor, or also Hearth Guard and stuff like that. Sometimes you can also just get another copy of LeBlanc and use her to pressure. Can also get a Chump Blocker if you need it on defense turns. So overall, just a really good card to use both aggressively and defensively. Each time she sees you deal 15 damage, you'll get another mirror image or you get a discount. So really nice overall, just really good in the early game to pressure the board, uh, get the five attack strikes in, and also use Elixir of Iron and Brittle Steel and stuff like that to protect her. Next we have a Reckless Trifurian, 3 mana 5, 4 camp block, just a really big aggressive unit, want to get those strikes in as early as possible, if you're attacking on odds, this card gets a lot of value because the opponent has to respect him, otherwise they'll be taking a lot of damage in the early game. Ash, which is our other champion, 4 mana 5, 3 on attack call, Frostbite the strongest enemy, that's really nice. Uh, her level up says, you've reduced the power of 4 enemies to 0, so we want to be attacking with her and also using our Frostbite. Over the course of the game, she'll level, which is really nice. On level, she creates a Crystal Arrow on top of the deck, which is an AoE Frostbite. Really useful because when she's leveled, enemies with zero attack cannot actually block. So you basically set up a lock on the opponent where they have a bunch of units that can't block, and you swing with a bunch of five attack units and try to close out the game that way. Obviously, this is a much easier win con to pull off if the opponent doesn't respect LeBlanc or Trifurian and they take you know, instances of 5 damage in the early game, Ash can very easily close out and be really annoying for the opponent to deal with. Next we have a card for interacting with the opponent, Bloody Business, 4 mana fast speed. On cast, it says an ally with 5 plus power strikes an enemy. They do not take damage back, it is just a one way strike, so this is obviously really good even at 4. At 2, it's beyond premium, so you want to get the reputation as soon as possible, and then use it to strike, and then there's like other effects like LeBlanc can see this, and that will help her level. You know, you can get rid of some blockers, and then frostbite the remaining blockers and attack with leveled Ash, so just overall a really good card, especially at dealing with key targets that the opponent is putting up that you want to kill ASAP. 
And moving right along, we have Trifarian Assessor, 4 mana, 4, 3. When I'm summoned, draw one for each 5 plus power ally you have. She can actually proc herself as well if she's hit by Omenhawk or Averosian Hearthguard, so that will be ideal. If you summon Assessor with just like a big wide board of five attack allies, you get to refill your entire hand, right? You know, upwards of five draw, sometimes six if you're really, really crazy. So that's absolutely insane, especially when you get into the mid late game and you just need more utility, you need more resource, you don't want to burn out, really, really good. Now we have Averosian Hearthguard, five mana, five, six, really big stats. When I'm summoned, grant all allies in your deck plus one, plus one. So Omen Hawk, but it extends into your entire deck. Every unit gets hit, even your assessors to help you draw. And obviously he's really good because he's five attack, so he's proccing reputation. He's a really big body, can block a lot of things, and also just trade in the mid game. Next we have Harsh Winds, a five mana Frostbite two. First speed, really nice, can use it defensively, can use it aggressively, just like most Frostbite stuff. Uh, super nice if you have Ash leveled. Obviously, that's like what to go for, especially on open attack. You can just Frostbite three things, Harsh Winds, and then also attack from Ash. So, you know, you can just use that to close out games sometimes. And it also stalls. If the opponent's trying to strike with weapons, if they're trying to strike with elusives, you can just Frostbite them and keep the game going longer. And we have one of the strongest cards in the deck, Reckoning. Six mana slow speed spell. If you have a five plus power ally, kill all units with four or less power. This does include your own, so be a bit mindful. However, if you have like two or three five plus power allies and you resolve Reckoning and it wipes the opponent's board, you just outright win the game in a lot of instances, right? It's really hard to come back from that because you're going to be swinging with 15 plus damage. The opponent has to redevelop. If there's no deny for this or no interaction with your unit, it's just really, really uh, insane. Game winning tempo swing. So hard run this at three and then win some cheap games. And to round out the list, we have Incisive Tactician, eight mana, five, five, reputation, I cost six. Uh, ideally, you'll probably be on reputation by the time you ever play this guy. So he should cost six. When I'm summoned, rally. So it's a really nice rally effect. If you are already, you know, developed and you already have Ash leveled and she attacks, and you attack with a bunch of things and then you rally and attack again, it should probably be game over. So Incisive Tactician will come in and win you the game if you need to attack a second time on a specific turn, or if you just need to attack on defense turn while your opponent is setting up their final push, maybe you get yours off faster. So yeah, Incisive Tactician, really good, especially at a quick two of. He can come down and help proc reputation as well if he hasn't, which would be absolutely tragic if you haven't by turn eight, but you know, he's here and he's nice. And Rally is obviously a premium effect and it's really nice that this deck has access to it. And that's it for the deck rundown. Now here's a live commentary game so you can see how it plays out. I'll be giving context to why I'm playing certain cards and hopefully it gives you a good feel on how to play the deck. And for the example game, we're going to be fighting the ever popular Fizz Samira, which is funny because that's actually the deck that uh, is the reason for Ash LeBlanc coming up in popularity so much because Reckoning is such a good card, Brittle Steel is such a good card, and Frostbite in general is just a really good mechanic. Wow, I pitched Reckoning and got Reckoning. That's a little goofy. Looks like we're probably going to resolve it this game, but yeah, we do have Omen Hawk and we do have Burst Speed Frostbiting. Burst Speed is good because Fizz cannot actually stop it. So it kind of prevents his Nexus Strike if he's already leveled. It can help, you know, kill him. It's overall really good. Yeah, Omen Hawk on one is obviously really nice, setting us up. Tactician, maybe later. We'll open attack with our Omen Hawk and then float two, since we don't really have anything else to play. And then we can slam LeBlanc right on turn no three. Hello, Samira. Just an impression. I'm sure they'll do something like um, Flare Challenger LeBlanc if they see it. So they'd also have to be on... Whoa, Double Tactician. That's interesting. I saw Triple Reckoning and Double Tactician. Deal one. And a Butcher. Yes, play LeBlanc. The best lies are and then we can do Brittle Steel on Samira. The only problem with that will be All Out slash Second Samira. So hopefully they tap out. If they tap to zero, we're okay. Or if they use Pirouette, I guess we can't do anything about that. Deal one stun and uh, go next turn. Stylus shot, sure. No problem. I'm kind of just thinking of open attacking and then getting a Reckoning resolved. We may have to just play both this game. Like, let's see, um, yeah, Fizz. I'll pass. What else you got? Stylish Shot, Flare. You need to play something to level Samira, right? Mm-hmm. 
you thought you'd seen it all. I'm surprised the option is stylish shot on defense. I think flare would have been a better use. Uh, and then we can go ahead and reckoning. And they're also down a stylish shot, which I like a lot. Maybe they have uh, barbed chains in there for refill, and that's what they plan on using their two mana for. But yeah, this reckoning is pretty devastating. All out. All right, we force an all out. I feel like that's relatively fine. We kill the Fizz. Uh, and we got the all out. Now we have Brittle Steel for Samira next turn. And another LeBlanc, which can be useful for the uh, Sigil of Malice. Ideally, we proc Reputation to make it cheaper, but even so, 3 mana deal 2 is kind of nice. Because we are playing a bit defensively here. Hope they're watching. Um, sure. Are you going to do Challenger? No, you're going to deal 1. And Schwindel! Ah! All right, let me try a Brittle Steel block. See what they got. It has to be Tactician, Tactician, Assessor, Reckoning, or Brittle Steel is what they saw. It is just Brittle, so we match. That is fine, I suppose. Kind of sucks I can't do my Assessor now. But whatever, they're down to th two cards left. We're controlling just fine. Playing a bit defensively here, you know? Sharpen the blade, secure the kill. Inferna? Hmm. I don't think there's anything stopping me from just doing Reckoning again, right? This forces them to be on a burst or fast speed thing to get Samira to rally, and then they just have nothing. Two Reckoning could actually just be the play. Swing with both, level Blanc post combat, bonk. Not quite reputation yet. We need one more strike. Oh, and then we could have been able to use tactician. On this turn, actually. But yeah, as long as we stay nice and controlled, we should be okay here. Maybe try Fury and Assessor for maximum draw, go on a Frostbite. Oh yeah, looks like we're just good to go. And the next deck I have for you is also a little bit of a classic, and that is Lurk. With a win rate of 52.44% and a play rate of 2.52%, it's doing pretty well for itself. Its winning matchups include Caitlyn Jack, Dragons, Jack Set, Karma Set Targon, and its worst matchups are Leona Kel Sunburn, Leona Kel Samira Sunburn, Leona Samira Sunburn, and also Narnora. So yeah, I guess it just kind of sucks in the Sunburn. So getting into the list specifically, it is pretty similar to just like previous versions of Lurk. However, it doesn't have the Jawfish anymore, which is like an 8 cost. So it does have to slot in a couple of other Lurk spells if it wants to stay primarily a Lurk deck. So we have Triple Bloodbait, create a Snapjaw Swarm on top of your deck. That way you can play this guy on defense turn and proc Lurk on defense, which is obviously really good at ramping it up. Next, we have Forsaken Bakai, a non-lurker. The reason why we run non-lurker, one, because we kind of have to, two, because he has Predict. One mana, two, one, Predict. If you pick a Darken Equipment, grant me one, one, never going to happen. Just using it to try to get uh, the lurk cards that you want, ideally champions. That way you have Rek'Sai, turboing the lurk, or you have Pike Spell, which is obviously super good. So yeah, we want to see champions. Sometimes we want to see a curving kind of play and get lurk cards that we want. Next, we have Sharkling, one mana, one, two, lurk. So yeah, I guess I should talk about the main mechanic, which is Lurk itself. When you attack while I'm on top of the deck, I Lurk, granting Lurker allies everywhere 1-0. So the Lurker tag is really important, and so is the Lurk keyword. You basically want to have a Lurk card on top of your deck. You can attack with anything, even non-Lurkers, and then it will buff all Lurkers everywhere by plus one. And that's really nice because it ramps, it keeps going, so you can get your one drop. Like, you know how the Sharkling's a 1-2? This thing can very easily be like a 5-2, a 6-2 and even onwards in the mid game, using it to attack with a lot of pressure and each unit just hitting for, you know, tons of damage. Next we have Xersai Hatchling, which is a one mana, one, one, fearsome lurk. Really nice, uh, especially good in the early game when the opponent can't block him very easily, get some pretty cheeky attacks in and is allowed to attack to get the lurk proc without sacking too much power. 
And we have Chronomancer, 2 mana, 2, 3 on play predict. Same thing as Bakai, but this one is a 2 drop, so it's really nice in case you're attacking on evens. You want to keep this in your opening hand. Same with the Bakai. That's why it doesn't really hurt the Lurk procs too much. We want to maintain as many Lurk cards in the deck as possible. That way you never whiff Lurk because that feels terrible. So the only ones that I say we should run is Bakai and Chronomancer because we want to keep those in opening hand. So if we see them, it's pretty hard to... Um, mess up lurk and hurt the uh basically allegiance procs over the course of the game so i really like this list as is i know some people run minus one blood bait and minus one call the pack that way you can fit like one ruthless predator one red of negation but that's completely optional up to if you want to do that i tend to stay you know as close to a full 40 list of lurk cards as i can that way i don't whiff because it does feel miserable and i'm a low roller so i have to play the deck as safe as possible and this is the list i'm choosing to do that Speaking of which, we have Call the Pack next. Two mana, Burst Speed, Lurk Spell, so that's really nice. It can proc Lurk for you. Uh, to play, put a card from hand on top of deck, create two random Lurkers. So if you're afraid of whiffing Lurk, or if you just want a specific card on top of your deck, think like one of your champions in case they're in your hand, you put them on top, then you get to attack and also generate some resources. So it's really nice at refilling the hand if you're just kind of like spitting out units over and over and over. Call the Pack helps refill. So does Rek'Sai level, by the way, which we'll get to, and that's really nice. Kind of like an innate synergy that the deck has to pump out a whole bunch of cards and then refill them back. So, really good overall. And we have a Redfin Hammersnout, 2 mana, 1, 2 Lurk. Also, play Grant an Enemy Vulnerable, any enemy of your choice, then you can swing into it with your high attack, low cost Lurkers. And that's obviously really good because you get to trade up quite often, oftentimes killing champions, uh, even with your 1 and 2 drops. So, that's really nice. Snapjaw Swarm, 2 mana, 0, 2 Lurk. Play, I start a free attack. He attacks by himself, so keep that in mind. You basically want to use Snapjaw Swarm on defense turn, because if you're attacking on your attack turns, then you're usually missing one turn of Lurk on your defense. Snapjaw Swarm helps that, just basically remedies the situation and lets you turbo proc Lurk. So if you're playing like units attacking and then Snapjaw Swarm, he's attacking, you're just going to get out of control and the opponent has a hard time keeping up with all the pressure. And we have Rek'Sai, 3 mana, 3, 6, Lurk. When I Lurk or attack, Grant Lurker allies everywhere plus 1. So no matter what, if she's on top or if she's attacking, she gives an extra plus 1 on top of the normal. So that's really good at, again, turboing the Lurk stats. And it's really good for her level up condition. She needs to attack, so start the attack call with 10 plus power. So if you get to that threshold, then she will level and lose her round end effect. Round end, it says, place me into the deck. That's obviously really bad. So we want to level and lose the effect so she stays on board and also gains overwhelm on level. Also on level, man, Rek'Sai does everything. When I level up, create three random lurkers in hand. So this is like the call the, the pack effect where she gives you more resources. Cool. When I lurk or attack, grant lurker allies everywhere one zero. She has overwhelm, so really big finisher card. Super nice. Zersai Caller, a 3 mana 2 3 Lurk. Play Predict, so just another Predict, but is also Lurk. We want to be hitting the same things, champions, and also, you know, other units that we want. Maybe Snapjaw Swarm going on our next defense, and things like that. Next, we have our other champion, Pike. 4 mana 1 3. When I Lurk, transform me into Death from Below. Now, this is really important. Death from Below is Pike spell. So if you Lurk him, uh, he turns into this instead of staying as a unit. And it's a really good spell. 4 mana, fast speed, summon Pike striking an enemy for free basically. So Pike will strike the enemy and then summon himself onto your board. Which is obviously really good because you can just use this to kill priority targets in the early mid. You can use it to intercept plays. Uh, if the enemy is trying to find a lethal with something like Noxion Fervor, you can play this. It will resolve first, killing the Noxion Fervor target and just putting you ahead. And it's really, really sick. If allied pikes deal 15 damage over the course of the game, he levels. And on level, what he does is if he kills an enemy, he strikes the next weakest one. If he kills that one, he strikes the next weakest. If he kills that one, he strikes the next weakest. Yeah, it's a chain kill. So basically, they took his ult from League, put it straight into this game, and it's really sick. Uh, practically game winning if you pull it off. I've only ever seen it a few times because usually the opponent surrenders or I surrender before it resolves, but it is really good. Blood in the Water, 5 mana Lurk spell, deal 1 to anything, then rally. You can use this on 1 HP Nexus, if the opponent is greedily blocking and going down to 1, you can finish them off there, or you can finish off a 1 HP enemy, and then attack. Really nice. Lurk rally, super strong. Xerxeret the Under Titan, 5 mana, 2, 6, Lurk. Attack. If I have 8 plus power, give me Fearsome, Overwhelm, Spell Shield. So if you're ramping over the course of the game, get this guy on 5, maybe another one on 6. Really nice, just like push 
this uh, fearsome overwhelm spell shield unit into the opponent's face. Really hard to deal with, really hard to block, and really hard to remove. So overall, just a great card in the mid game. And rounding out the list, we have Xerside Dunebreaker, six mana, three five. Also overwhelm, so this thing's gonna be like seven or eight attack by the time you play it sometimes, and that's really big. Just another nice finisher when you get into the mid game here. And that's it for the deck rundown. Like I mentioned before, you can take out a Call the Pack and a Blood Bay and run two more non-lurk cards. Usually you want to stay around like the four to six non-lurks and then you're kind of good. I like to stay, you know, again, closer to the low amount. So I only have four non-lurkers and I'm usually pretty happy with that. So here's a live commentary game so you can see how the deck plays out. And for the example game, what a twist of fate. We have Ash LeBlanc here, the deck that we just covered. Uh, so let's go ahead and keep Sharkling, because we're attacking on odds, which is really good, and probably pitch the rest. Hammerfin Snout is okay at granting some things vulnerable, but honestly, playing into Frostbite is not that great. Alright, so we're going to go ahead, oh we got him back anyways, and play our Sharkling on turn 1. Lurk usually wants to attack on odds, so they can start proccing Lurk right away, so this is a bit of a high roll for us, we won the 50-50, and we get to attack on turn 1. And it is starting. Alright, so we probably can just play the Hammer Snout on something here. Okay, we have infinite Hammer Snouts, so it would seem. Let's go ahead and play it. Give that vulnerable. Go into next turn. We are just going to go wide. Let's play... Hi, Rek'Sai. Um, you know what would be really cool? This is actually a bit of an intermediate combo. What we want to do is call the pack and then choose Rek'Sai. That puts Rek'Sai on the top, and then we swing into the Omen Hawk, getting the Rek'Sai proc. Plus one, plus two, because she's on top. And then we play Blood Bait, giving it a Snapjaw Swarm on top of the deck, so we play that on defense turn. And Rek'Sai is going to stay exactly where she is, giving us another double proc, which is insane. We're already matching an Omen Hawked Averosian Trapper on turn three, so yeah, let's Blood Bait. And then pass, and then we have Snapshot Swarm as first action defense turn, which is just not chill. This may be one of the fastest ways to actually get Lurker going. So yeah, Rek'Sai is still on top here. LeBlanc, sure thing. We play Snapjaw Swarm immediately. This will now pressure both units. And put us up to six attacks. So now if they have any Reckonings, they're dead in hand unless they also have Frostbite. Looks of Iron, sure. Stay alive with 1 HP. I will probably be trading into that with the 6-1. A Yeti on top. That is scary. Alright, let's play Hammer Snout on the LeBlanc. And we can block the Yeti. I mean, our fish are just bigger. Our fish are bigger than their Yetis, and that is kind of sad. 6-1 here, 6-2 here. Maybe get a Brittle Steel or a second Elixir of Iron. Yes, it's a Brittle Steel. All right, to be expected. The black rose blooms once more. Yep, early LeBlanc level. But she is also vulnerable, so we can kill her quite easily. Rek'Sai is at 8, so that is leveled Rek'Sai already if we want to go for that. They'd have to be on harsh winds like right now, so what I want to do is probably hammer snout the 5-5. Five five, and then feel out the turn. If they have Frostbite mana, I'm probably not going to play Rek'Sai and lose her. If they tap, then I will play Rek'Sai. Victory requires a sharp blade. Three mana, so it has to be exactly hard run flash freeze and that's it. Not three sisters, not harsh winds. I'm playing Rek'Sai. She's not brittle stealable and we have Rek'Sai turbo level on attack five. That is absolutely insane. One of the fastest lurk games I've ever played. Grab, grab. Uh, we'd want to grab LeBlanc first so she doesn't see extra damage. And then we push the Overwhelm. This looks good in general, yeah. As long as we don't whiff Lurk. If we whiff Lurk, it'd be so tragic, but we do not. So Rek'Sai goes up to 7 HP here. Yep. Yeah. And we just have a lethal right there. That is absolutely insane. And the last deck I have for you is a repeat offender here on Meta Report. I've covered it many times. That's right, it is Sunburn, but with a new coat of paint. 
It's got a win rate of 56.51%, holy, and a play rate of 1.9%. It is very powerful. Its best matchups include Jin Annie, Jack Samira, Karma Set, and Udyr Jack. The bad matchups are Vegar Nora, Riven Varus, also a little bit of Samira in there, Heimer Jace, and Swain Caitlyn. Yeah, I say it has a new coat of paint because it is running a new second champion. It's had a decently long history now, abusing other champions alongside Leona, including Katarina and Kale. Katarina has been rotated out, so we are replacing it with Samira. Starting us off with the list, we have Triple Crimson Pigeon, of course, 1 mana 2 2, one of the best, if not the best, aggressive cards in the game. Support, deal 1 to my support at ally, grant me 1 1. This has insane synergy with the deck because of Daybreak. Daybreak gives themselves temporary stats, so Crimson Pigeon can use those temporary stats to give itself a permanent one, while also not hurting your board too much. Next we have Saboteur, 1 mana 2 1, attack, deal 1 to the enemy Nexus, or free on attack call, so really nice, even if she gets blocked she deals 1 cheeky damage, and that can go a long way. Solari Soldier, Daybreak, we are going to be proccing Daybreak over the course of the game to level Leona, is a 1 mana 3 3 if you play him first in the turn, that's really good on turn 1, the opponent has a hard time blocking, that's really good on defense 1 in case you are also in an aggro mirror match, he kind of just wins out in both situations, he's pretty good even on like turns 2 and 3, so overall really solid card, love to see that. Next we have Triple Pale Cascade. Give an ally 1-1 one, one this round, Nightfall draw 1, so it refills uh, one card in hand for you if you play it second or onwards in the turn. Really cool since we are playing Daybreak, obviously Nightfall is going to come out after that and be super useful and have a nice little synergy for us. And of course we are running uh, a new offender to the meta, Samira. 2 minute 2-2 two, two quick attack, 1 up summoner strike, create a flare if you don't have one. Flare is a burst speed deal 1 or give an ally challenger. A lot of times we're going to be giving allies challenger in this deck because we have really big stats like Sun Guardian, we have the 2 mana 3-6, and that's just absolutely insane. So we're going to be using those to pressure the board and stay ahead in the early game. That way we can push more damage in the mid game, right? We're not really trying to level Samira in this deck. If we do, cool. It's kind of rare. Um, but yeah, we're not going to be dealing one and using all out because we're not running all that. So the challenger is oftentimes going to come up and be really good for us. Uh, if she does level, again, that's pretty cool. I think I've gotten her leveled and also rallied like one time it wasn't super relevant but it did come up so hey that's pretty cool i've personally used this deck to climb to high diamond with like 70 percent win rate and higher so i can attest this deck is very powerful it is the closest thing to like an aggro burn deck that we have now that decimate has been rotated out so if you enjoy like aggro play styles take it from me this one is pretty natural and pretty easy to play Moving on to the next card, we have Slari Shieldbearer, the 2 mana 3-6 I was talking about. On Daybreak, give me 0-4, like holy, that is just crazy. Uh, really strong card. Solari Sunhawk, 2 mana 2-3. Daybreak stunned the strongest enemy. This is nice. Fun fact, this is not a targeted spell, so Fizz cannot stop this. If uh, it would target him, he just has to deal with it. He can't stop. So that's pretty nice. I love that. Uh, Leona's works the same because the targets can change. Therefore, it's not targeted is basically how the wording works. It's a bit funky, but once you get used to it, it's really nice. Really great tool to have. Stunning is like absolutely insane in Legends or in Terra. So we do have this guy at three. Can use it aggressively or defensively and be happy both ways. Violet Protector, a 2 mana 2-2, two, two. Daybreak, give Daybreak allies plus 1 plus 1 this round. This includes himself, so he's a 2 mana 3-3 three, three if played first. Uh, the Nightfall we don't really use too much, but sometimes it can come up if you have multiple Protectors. Not super relevant, but the Daybreak 1-1 one, one buff is really nice, especially if you use it like turn 6 onwards when you're already set up, and you have 3 or 4 Daybreak units. This guy comes down, gives everything plus 1. Really big, really nice, um, and you get some pretty good mid-game pushes with uh, Twilight Protector. Honestly, can't complain, really good card. Triple Might, give an ally 3, 0, and Overwhelm this round. This is basically transitioning Sun Guardian's big attack stats, or like Kale's big attack stats, into a lethal. Just being able to like, get something out of your big stats is nice. Might is a great finisher card, so we're running it at a 3 of. Noxion Fervor, another finisher card in case the opponent does go down to 3 HP from our relentless attacking with our insanely statted units. We can just use Fervor to close out the game. Sun Guardian, one of our big boys, 3 mana 2 3 on Daybreak, give himself 1 1, so it's a 3 3 4. Every time you activate Daybreak onwards, it will also give him another plus 1 plus 1, so this thing's gonna be like a 5 6, 6 7. Then you use Might, push like infinite damage, really good overall. 
Next we have a quick one of Kale. I don't really like running Samira at 3. I like 2 Samira, 1 Kale because the Kale can come up quite often and have a really big, you know, attack stats because we are attacking with enhanced allies over the course of the game quite often with our Daybreak stuff. So Kale can come down with like 5 or 6 attack and is a great might target on top of having quick attack. Also gives a big AoE plus 1 attack boost to the board. So if you're wide, Kale can come down and be like a pseudo Garen. Doesn't give the HP, but the 1 attack is basically what we want. And we can just like push for lethals that way. I really like it. I think triple Samira might be a bit bricky. Is like pseudo useful. I really like the one of Kale. I think it's spicy. Definitely up to player preference. You can do triple Samira or you can do two Samira, one Kale. Completely up to you, but I do like it. And it has come up for me as a great might target. And we have our final champion that we're going to talk about, Leona, 5 mana 3-5, Challenger, really good at contesting the board, Daybreak, stun the strongest enemy. So you're basically putting two enemies out of commission, you're stunning one and you can grab another, that way your board can swing and get in a lot of damage, Leona can, you know, kill a high priority target, just be really scary overall. And the real scary thing is when she's leveled, if she's leveled, each time you activate a Daybreak each turn, she also stuns again. So if you have her plus Ravoon out, which we're going to be talking about very shortly, you can get multiple stuns because he makes it day always. So you can play multiple Daybreak cards a turn. And then you just get like these big AoE stuns, uh, Morning Light, more stuns, more damage, and then you just kind of swing and the opponent can't do anything about it. So that's uh, where a lot of the power from this deck comes from. And getting into Ravoon. 5 mana 5-5, five, five, Daybreak, create a random Daybreak card in hand, so that's really good, it gives you a resource right away, and also it's always day for us. So you proc Daybreak over and over and over, super good synergy with Leona, super good synergy with Sun Guardian, you can play like multiple Sunhawks in the same turn and get more stuns off, just overall really good card, basically another champion in the deck for us in terms of power and synergy. And rounding out the list, there's a one quick sunburst, basically because the deck list is like kind of tight as is, and there is room for a one of. I really like sunburst. This is deal six to a unit, daybreak, silence it, and then deal six. So if they try to buff it, or if it already has buffs, it just dies. Just really good. Five cost, single target removal. I like it a lot. It's basically like Targon's form of vengeance at slow speed, so and it has daybreak synergy. I like it. A lot of people take it out and run like a random one of Precious Pet, but I think in most games, a one of Sunburst is going to be more useful than a one of Precious Pet. So I think we're going to go that route and I highly recommend trying it. I think Sunburst is super good, especially in this meta. And that's it for the deck rundown. Now here's a live commentary game so you can see how it plays out. There's no way. It's Ash LeBlanc again. All right, Ash LeBlanc day. Everyone's playing it. It is the, the, the hotness right now, so do recommend trying it. Crimson Pigeon on one, pitch, pitch, pitch. We don't really want these. We want to see our early game units as much as possible, especially our aggressive Daybreak ones. That way we can combo the Pigeon with them. And Leona on attack five will be nice. So let's play Pigeon. And then we probably set up a second Pigeon, to be honest, and then Twilight Protector on attack three. Seems pretty good. If we top deck uh, another Daybreak card, we may play that and try to get the Leona leveled on five. Would also be super good. But we shall see. Let's push with our Pigeon here. Uh, we do have our one of Sunburst, so we can kill LeBlanc or Ash. Oh my god, triple Pigeon. That is a crazy hand, actually. Wait, that seems really strong. If you open triple Pigeon, don't you just win the game? Well, we're about to find out. I think triple Pigeon into Emote might make the opponent surrender. So I'm not going to Emote. That would be a pretty good play, though. But not this time. I want to play third pigeon and then lead turn three with Twilight Protector probably. And we can just like, just ah, Glory Seeker, sure. Then we can get a lot of attack pressure in. Looks good. To be expected. Um, Yeah, Protector. And then also Saboteur. As you can see, we're very aggressive. We're dumping our entire hand and pushing like 11 or 12 damage on turn three. Yeah, we do like this. 12. 12 damage on turn 3. That is kind of crazy. Riddle Seal, yeah, prevent some damage. Taking 9. So hopefully we can just kind of like run away with this game, right? We want to run over the board before they can do a unit plus Reckoning. Uh, Sun Guardian, yeah. That's really nice. Ash. Sun Guardian. That Ash was hit by Omen Hawk. Oh my goodness. That is kind of annoying. So I'm just going to take it. 
and then try to stay wide. So here's the one thing we're not going to do, okay? We're not going to play Leona and then get Reckoning. Ain't no way. We have two variations of play we can do here. We can open attack and get Harsh Winds and then maybe Might, or we can play Sunburst. Sunburst is probably the best call for us because it activates Daybreak for Sun Guardian. It kills the Ash. Uh, getting rid of a reckoning target and basically just says all right now you have one action to play another unit and then i'm attacking for a little bit more damage so i like that a lot i think we're just gonna go ahead and play our one of sunburst and call it a day oh it is a proactive harsh winds all right just immediately sending it out i respect it my aim is true I guess they really want the Crystal Arrow, which I believe is fine. No, Elixir of Iron doesn't work. They're about to learn something really sad today. This says silence it, so any buffs, bye bye. They did not get the memo, guys. They did not get the memo. Swing, swing, swing. I guess we could do like this, doesn't really matter. And that is exact lethal unless they have another Brittle Steel. Look at that! Kinda nice, kinda clean. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and say it, but a random one of Precious Pet would not have done that. I'm just saying. But that about wraps it up for this week's decks. Overall, the meta is looking pretty wild. There's a lot of new and returning champions to kind of mix things up, and I think that's really cool. It shouldn't be too long before things shake out even more and we see more decks come up. It is really exciting that Ash LeBlanc basically came from like tier 3 straight into tier 1 and is at the third most popular deck of the entire patch. And it's only had a week or so to do that, so that should speak volumes about how there are probably some other decks out there just waiting for their spot in the limelight. Make sure to stay tuned for more updates. This has been Meta Report. Thank you so much for watching and have a good one. Laters!